Hi, and welcome to Orbis Multiplex, a complex simulation-oriented strategy game on planetary scale. This week, I'd like to talk about the latest system I've implemented, which is uh, the tick system up here in the top right. Previously, ticks, or turn as I sometimes also call them, uh, were processed manually. You needed to uh, hit the next turn button every time you wanted uh, the turn to uh, update. But now, these ticks can be processed automatically. At the moment it's running, we can hit spacebar to pause it and space to run it again. And this is the uh, desired length of uh, a tick in seconds. So now with a value of 1, it's updated once a second. And we can see here that uh, the values for, in this case, uh, labor being distributed is, atom is updated uh, automatically. So we can build stuff here. And it will automatically do these uh, calculations. We don't have to spam the next turn button anymore, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, but apart from that, I've not uh, changed uh, the gameplay in any sense. So what I'd like to talk about in this video is uh, how I implemented uh, this uh, automatic tick system. So let's have a look at the code. So this is the code for uh, a class named uh, Tick Handler, which uh, does all of the management about the tick. Um, this inherits from uh, mono behavior, which means we can have an update function. The update function is called once every frame. Here I do some checks, like uh, is the previous tick done? I check uh, if the game is paused. I do a check here about um, whether uh, the necessary time has elapsed since the last tick. If not, we wait. And uh, here I uh, check if we uh, need to do a tick immediately. If all conditions are met, we stop the previous coroutine and start a new coroutine. And here is the coroutine. I use coroutine to simulate all the systems. This simulates the ecosystem growth. Here I have fauna migration, uh, some updates, not very fun. Uh, resource transportation, industry uh, production, uh, some mapping, also some mapping. Here I update uh, map filters. Map filters are the visual uh, aspect that you see uh, on the map. And uh, how do these work uh, in more detail? Well, I have this while loop, what I call a simulate function. We can go into one of these simulate functions to uh, understand a bit more about what it does. This is uh, the simulate function for fauna migration. It takes uh, a subset as input. A subset I define as um, a subset of the tiles that should be calculated. So if uh, fauna migration can be done for 10,000 tiles, then a subset might be 100 or 1,000 of those tiles. Here I do some uh, multi-threaded uh, processing using Unity's job system. I have two jobs, a diffusion job and an update job. The diffusion job basically tells, um, uh, calculates how uh, the fauna should uh, move and uh, the update actually does the uh, update of those movements. And I loop over all entries in a fauna template. So I do this for all animals. And here is an interesting part. I check, have we processed all tiles? In this case, we should process all the land tiles in, in the world. If so, this function will return true. And if there are more tiles to process, uh, we return a true. This while will continue as long as uh, the function here returns true. So there are more tiles to process. But once it returns false, uh, we will uh, enter out of it. Uh, and inside a loop here, I have um, this is out of time function. What that does is that it keeps track of how much time we have uh, taken in the current frame. 
if we exceed the max tick time here, which I have defined in such a way that we uh, can sustain 60 FPS. If so, it will return true and uh, yield. So we will exit into the next frame. So let's talk about this in a more uh, abstract way. The code that I just show uh, can be visualized something like this. This center white line is a timeline. The time processes from left to right. One of these sections uh, is a frame. And within a frame, two things are done. The red and green are blocks of time. The red is some kind of uh, overhead stuff uh, that isn't related to tick processing. It can be uh, stuff in the graphics. It can be stuff in the uh, user interface, whatever. And the green is the time slot that we have to actually do the processing, the, the simulations that should be done in a tick. And a tick is defined as a number of frames in which we do this green stuff. Here I show two examples of one, the left here, where we can sustain 60 FPS. It's when the green bar does not uh, exceed its limits. And then the right spot here, the green takes too long. So uh, the time of the frame is longer than what we want, which is 1 60th of a second, if we want to uh, keep 60 FPS. And uh, a way to ensure that we keep this uh, 60 FPS is that I use this is out of time function that I mentioned uh, previously in the code. What it does is that it does this check and returns a true or false, uh, like mentioned previously. Here, one green uh, box is one iteration in a while loop. So after each loop, uh, it checks, are we out of time or not? In this case, the time has been exceeded uh, by a small margin, but uh, the function works in such a way that during the next frame, this uh, exceeded amount here will be uh, kept track of. So on average, uh, all the t frames should uh, run at 60 FPS. Now, how to choose the subset size? I mentioned previously that we, uh, for the system, we do not do the calculations for all the tiles in that system at a time. We do it for a subset. Now you can choose subsets in different ways. Here are two examples of extreme cases. If we have very small subsets, we will have to do a lot of iterations in the while loop to simulate the entire system. On the other hand, if we have a very big subset, this will be done uh, in fewer iterations. Every iteration in the while loop has some overhead. When we check uh, if we're out of time, that has some overhead. But also when we are setting up uh, the Unity's uh, job system with multi-threading, that also has some overhead. So having two small subsets uh, will make uh, overhead a big problem. But, and on the other hand, if we have very large subsets, they will very often exceeded limit here, which can be a problem in terms of uh, maintaining 60 FPS. Even though uh, the is out of time function tries to keep track of this, if it um, exceeds uh, every frame like this, then uh, this out of time function can't uh, compensate that much. So uh, choosing subset isn't um, trivial, and it also has to do with hardware. These are two imaginary <laughs> scenarios. If we use the, si the same subset size, depending on our CPU, if it's a very poor CPU or if it's a good CPU, the same subset uh, will take different amounts of time. Like here, this subset is done um, far under the time that we have uh, in our slot. And here, this single subset is, uh, becomes a problem. And at the moment, this isn't being handled in the code very well. I've uh, hard-coded these uh, subsets for what works on uh, my machine, which is pretty large subset. I have a, a good high-end CPU, so that's what it's hard-coded for. Here is an example of my uh, CPU load for when I have um, a desired tick duration of five seconds. It can be seen that every five seconds, uh, there is a peak where calculations are done, and in between, 
no, none of the tick um, processing uh, stuff is done. So that's uh, when we are on idle. I'm uh, recording, so the idle is a bit above average. And here I've changed to a desired tick duration of one second. Uh, so we can see that the uh, distance between peaks uh, reduces um, as is as expected. Now, what is a realistic uh, tick duration? Well, in terms of gameplay, I think a tick duration of maybe five seconds is uh, reasonable. Or uh, maybe even 10 seconds. A tick duration of one second is very small. And uh, in terms of uh, gameplay, it's probably not realistic. You would be playing on uh, super speed. But uh, yeah, in terms of testing stuff, it should still be supported. This system, it's great. Because it means that I can run the simulations for a long time without having to... Uh, spam the next turn button so I can test things out on larger scales much easier. So what I'm going to implement next are global resources. Uh, all resources at the moment are physical, meaning that they, they exist on a tile and is transported uh, between tiles. What I mean with global resource is a resource like uh, maybe money would be a good example that is not bound to a specific tile, but uh, is uh, something that the player has access to wherever uh, he chooses to build stuff. So, so money could be a good example, but also uh, maybe scientific uh, research or uh, stuff like that could be a good example. Uh, I had plans to uh, start implementing um, the population uh, system, a separate population system. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait a bit with that. I have some uh, design uh, decisions which I'm unsure if uh, they are good or not. Um, there is, uh, well, the project consists of two parts. It is this um, scientifically semi-accurate simulation and there is also this uh, strategic and uh, management gameplay aspect of the project and in some systems those two aspects um, align and they support each other but in other ways I think um, they uh, contradict each other what is good for the scientific simulation is not necessarily good for gameplay and at the moment, I'm reconsidering some design decisions, if they are good or not. One example is, previously I have thought that I want to divide each tile into percentages in such a way that if I zoom in on a tile, say this tile here. I want, uh, I want the player to be able to build industries on maybe 20%, uh, infrastructure like road on maybe 10%, and um, housing for population on yeah maybe 30%, and that would leave 40% to wildlife. And that tile percentage partitioning would be done for every tile of the world. That is a system that I have been thinking about a long time, but lately I'm reconsidering if it's actually good or not. I have about one million tiles in my world and this, um, it's hard coded at the moment, but it could easily be changed. Um, and I have one million tiles and by introducing, um, percentages on each tile I'm um, sort of getting in even higher resolution and the problem is do I need that resolution is uh, a resolution of a, a million tiles enough or do I need this like additional factor a hundred so that's some stuff I'm reconsidering 
and until that uh, I've come to a decision on that I'm gonna take things a bit slow and not uh, hastily implement stuff that I will change anyway. So that's it for this week. If you want to download the game, you can do so as usual on itch.io. Uh, and otherwise, I'll thank you for watching. Bye.